focus on your breath. When the breath comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. When it comes in again, stay with the breath again. Just keep with that one topic all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. It's there all the time. The problem is that our attention isn't there all the time. We tend to go wandering around, or not even wandering, we jump around. And as a result, the mind knows no peace. It keeps creating little worlds for itself, and then suddenly finds itself in those worlds. It can be many years, many miles away. And because those worlds are things that it's fabricated, after all, they start falling apart. And what it usually does then is it fabricates another world, and then another one, and then another one. And it doesn't find any truth that way, because it's often its own fabrications. If you want to find the truth about the mind, you've got to stay right here. Even though it may move, you don't have to move along with it. There's a part of the mind that can just observe the whole process of fabrication. The Buddha compares it to streams in the mind that go flowing out, but you don't have to go flowing out with them. You just watch. Try to keep your frame of reference right here in the present moment. The breath is a good way to do that, because there's no future breath that you can watch, no past breath you can watch. Just the breath coming in right now, going out right now. And that's why the other fabrications, whether well, it's what they call verbal fabrication, where the mind creates words inside before it actually speaks, all that mental chatter going on. Again, you don't have to get involved in what it's about. Just look at the process. There's chattering going on. Don't get sucked into it. Otherwise, it's like a crazy person coming up and trying to get you into its crazy world. And sometimes even just telling the person to go away will cause them to latch on to you. And if you get involved in actually arguing with a crazy person as to whether what he says is true or not, then you're really finished. The best thing to do is let the crazy person chatter, but you don't have to get involved with the chatter. Just remind yourself, that's a crazy person chattering. And after a while, when the crazy person sees that you're not interested, he'll go away. And a lot of the chattering in the mind is just like that. If you get involved in it, trying to figure out, is this true? Is this good? Is this right? Then you get really entangled. But if you see it simply as a process of fabrication in the mind, the mind is making up these words. And just because there are words going through the mind doesn't mean that they have to be true, or that they have to refer to anything at all. Same with the feelings or perceptions of the mind. Try to see them simply as a process. A feeling comes and we decide immediately whether we like it or dislike it, and then get involved in it. It becomes your feeling. Then you feel happy, or you feel pleasant, or you feel pained. And it's no longer just a process, it's your feeling. And that starts getting you entangled as well. You worry about what it means. Especially if it's a pain, you worry about what it means. But if you can see it simply as a process, something that arises for a while, and stays for a while, and then passes away, you don't have to get involved. This is what allows you to stay in the present moment. In other words, you try to cut off all the things that would connect you to the past or the future. 
and you do it bit by bit by bit. It's not that you never will want to think about the past or future. That's it's a skill the mind already has. You don't lose that skill when you meditate. It's simply you learn when to use it and when not. But for the time being, the skill it lies in trying to stay right with the present moment, not allowing yourself to get entangled in these other worlds. So when a thought arises in the mind, you don't have to complete it. You don't have to explore it. Just say, there's a little stirring in the mind, but leave it on just on the level of stirring. In the meantime, you just stay with the breath. Try to make the breath as comfortable as possible. This is one of the most important principles of the practice. If the breath isn't comfortable, you're not going to want to stay with it. But if it feels good coming in, feels good going out, that's a process of fabrication that's actually useful. After all, concentration itself is a kind of fabrication. But it's a helpful fabrication. Instead of pulling you away from the present moment, it helps you stay, helps you stay here. So you can see other fabrications as they come and they go. Ultimately, you'll want to turn around and look at this process of fabrication for the time being, though. Just focus on being with the breath, making the breath comfortable. You can experiment with different rhythms of breathing. You can make it faster or slower, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. All kinds of ways you can play with the breath. Do you figure out which kind of breathing feels good for the body right now? Then just stay there. All too often the mind has this compu feels this compulsion. It's got to go someplace else. What's the next place? What's the next place? Well, the time, time keeps providing you with a new moment all the time, and all you have to do is stay with that new moment. There's nowhere else you have to go. Nothing else you have to do. Just work on this one process of staying with the breath and exploring the breath so you can give it your full attention. Think of the breath coming in and out of the body through every pore of your skin. It's coming in and out through all directions. Your only duty is to keep tabs on it. In this way, the breath helps you get out of all those worlds of the mind. All those old tapes, all those old movies, the old discussions that go bouncing through the mind, ricocheting through the mind all the time. Instead of getting involved with them, you just watch them as processes coming and going. The breath gives you a spot. It's a physical spot. It helps keep you grounded. So whatever other movement there may be in the mind, you don't have to get in the line of fire. This way you begin to see the truth of what's actually going on in the mind. It helps you see through a lot of the fabrications that the mind makes up. the things that can get you excited, the things that can get you upset. You look at their actual reality in the present moment, and there's not much there. They seem so convincing, they seem so real when you get inside them. But if you see them simply as processes, as fabrications, you realize there's no need. It's like driving past a drive-in movie theater at the night. You see the images flashing on the screen, and as long as you don't try to follow them and make sense of them, you see what they are. They're just flashing, flashing, flashing there on the screen. And you realize you have the choice. You can either get involved in the plot of the movie and actually start thinking there are people up there on the screen. But you also realize, why would you want to do that? Just leave it on the level of flashing, flashing, flashing. The choice is yours. There are times when the thinking processes of the mind are very useful. You need them in order to function. But there are other times when the mind is just spinning its wheels, churning up all kinds of mud and other stuff. 
When you see that happen, you realize that's the time to get out. When you get out, well, where do you go? You stay with the breath. So if you want to see the truth of the mind, you have to be true to the breath. Stick with it all the way in, all the way out, for as long as you can. When you feel that you've realized that you've slipped off, and come back and stick with it again. Show the breath some loyalty. Be true in sticking with it, and you'll start seeing a lot of the truths of the mind that you never saw before, truths that are really beneficial, truths that are really useful in pulling you out of your old habits of creating a lot of unnecessary stress and strain and suffering. It's a simple strategy. It may not be easy, but if you work at it, you find that it's one of the best strategies there is.